Speaking of uh, things that uh, that can piss you off, uh, Nexus, how's Demon Souls oh. going? Okay. So I How do you like that segue? I'm I'm trying to get I a better course. To <laughs> steal a bit from a, a reviewer I really respect named Tim Rogers and ActionButton.net. He always starts all of his reviews with the bottom line, right? Let me summarize because I'm going to ramble a lot. Let me summarize my thoughts in like a quick sentence and like a score. Overall, I really like the Demon Souls remake. Bottom line, it is like a perfect version of something that you love that exists in your head and now it's real. But for some reason, Rob Schneider is there and you can't quite figure out. Oh, no. He's there. No. So, <laughs> hopefully by the end of me talking about Demon Souls, you'll kind of understand where I'm coming from with that. Uh, I do overall, have a quick question yeah, before sure. we start. So I, wait, I'm right looking at I'm looking at this thing that Blaine posted in here, and the one of the usernames. I just have to give credit for this. Uh, the username is Bukake Hokage. <laughs> That's pretty good. That is, uh, a, that is a vintage fucking meme. What that is. But yes, I do have one question, Nexus, if you don't mind. Yeah. So what I remember of the Souls games is the character creators are fucking Garbo. Yes. Ooh. And the beautiful humans that I'm seeing people. So. Make. The Demon Souls oh, remake, so weird and ultimately, Souls. like a lot of the NPCs too, all look really cool. And, and also the, the weird faces they're taking selfies like, with. Like what the fuck? Despite the fact that you can make a really good-looking character, you can still make like a freak too. You can have like a like a weird deformed face with like of like the eyes like bigger than like the mouth if you want to, but you can make an actual realistic-looking character. It's really okay. really awesome overwhelmingly good character creator because I like i am oh, i'm also yeah. people see oh sorry i'm like also seeing people take like selfies in the game you can make a yeah, character there's make a really stuff. good photo mode it's so weird to be like this doesn't look like demon yeah. souls to me it's when was imagine how trippy out. it is for me i played this game in 2010 this is this is this is basically um when you put in photo mode in a game it's sort of like uh imagine imagine you are a knight uh, trying to save your realm, but it's the year 2020, and you can share all your experiences yeah. on social media. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nexus, when was the last time you played the original? So the last time I played the original was about two years ago. And I've played the original, I want to say, like, from memory, probably eight times. And I've, I mean, beaten it eight times. I've played it a lot. Uh, honestly, Demon's Souls, probably one of my favorite games ever. I think ultimately it's, I think one of the most influential games made ever uh and like nexus is the the nexus and demon souls is the reason i have this username it's uh i love demon souls one that's of my favorite awesome games ever. Mm, that's really cool yeah. i actually i have a i have an origin story with demon souls yeah. as well um but mine is not as cheery uh <laughs> so when demon well, souls from fortune so, <laughs> so when oh, demon no. souls first came out for the PlayStation 3. Um, I had seen the, the, the trailers for it, everything mm. like that. It was like, um, you know, be prepared to die, basically. Yeah. It was like the tagline. And I was like, okay, cool. This game is going to be unnaturally hard. I like challenges. I, I, I'm, I'm down. Let's see what yeah. this game's all about. I still, by even saying that, I was not ready for the oh, kind yeah. of challenge that this game it was rough displayed it was so rough and honestly it, it sucks to say this but i played it i i beat the first boss which is the the phalanx or whatever the, or, yeah, phalanx. the phalanx and uh and then i i returned it <clears throat> yeah because i just couldn't it's, do it it's I, definitely I, yeah. rough yeah i'm um, like mechanically how does it Compared to the original, because obviously, you know, the original has a bit of, uh, I don't want to say jank, but it's a little rough around the edges. Uh, I believe they added omnidirectional rolling now at the least, yes. right? Uh, yes. All the, yeah. A lot of the animations are new, too. Oh, awesome. Are you mm -hmm. Have you been playing in cinematic or uh, performance? Uh, I've been playing in the performance mode, because uh, from what I could tell, there wasn't too big a difference with the cinematic mode, and I just mm. prefer to have the 60. I was watching a... Um, I, th I think it was a digital foundry video where yeah, they were interviewing the some of the some of the uh, blue points uh, developers. They said like, yeah, no, uh, basically cinematic and performance look ex nearly exactly the same. Yeah. So it's like there's probably no reason not, not to play performance. Picking, uh, performance. Uh, 
Uh, yeah. I've also been playing, because uh, the game has a lot of filters, kind of similar to how Shadow of the Colossus did it. Uh, I've been playing with a classic filter, so it looks a lot more like the PS3 game, which is really cool. Nice. Uh, that it just, like, all the color grading is the same. It still has, like, kind of, like, blue hue, stuff like that. It's really, really awesome. If you had um, to pinpoint uh, some of your uh, criticisms, what, what would some of the so, specifics be? Uh, I want The Rob Schneiders, if you way. will. I, I have a lot of complaints, but I want to say, like, a lot of them are smaller nitpicks that I only really have because it's one of my favorite games ever. And ultimately, I don't think any of these affect how I feel about it. Because I do think I do think Demon's Souls for PS5 is like awesome. Uh, I just have some minor issues. Uh, when Bluepoint made Shadow of the Colossus, a lot of people's biggest complaint was that a lot of the atmosphere of Shadow of the Colossus was kind of lost in the remake. And I think Demon's Souls kind of suffers from the same problem to a much heavier degree. Uh, a lot of the aesthetic and atmosphere of the game has kind of changed in ways that ultimately i think make it very different from the original ps3 version uh in particular a lot of the enemy and boss designs are changes uh and i think mostly they're fine there's a couple standout ones so like the adjudicator was this big like big like blob monster and he had these cool like intricate tattoos he almost looked like something that people would go to like worship or something and in the remake he's kind of just a big gross like blob monster covered in like dirt and blood and stuff it feels weird that they would take like those um those creative liberties with it yeah. because it, it's like such a wild deviation like There's, i can see like minor touch-ups or like yeah. but it just seems one, wild i did see one really good point about that which is that while these legit while these complaints are legitimate um I mean, like, I, I kind of scoffed at the initial things of, like, oh, Tower Knight looks fucked mm -hmm. up and Boletary should Oh, yeah, be I think Tower Knight right. looks great, actually. Because all that seems so, like, well, no, that was because it ran, like, shit on the PS3 and yeah. the lighting did not exist in that sense. But but then when I saw things like, um, I forget his name, but he's the dude that shows up before you fight Tower Knight. You brought this up next. As yes, the, the Fat it. Officials, which have fat an official. unfortunate name. Yeah, they, they took away the mask and just they yes. actually made it. Uh, it's made actually it not a mask. Just... It's their face. That's just what they look like. Okay, so then so then they fucked up and like instead of having them be like this like kind of fat character but also with like yeah. a cool face, now they're just the evil fat character. So the fat officials originally look like these like big kind of pompous like bourgeoisie dickheads, right? But they're possessed by a demon, and now their skin is all gray. They have this disgusting smile on their face, and they like they laugh at you and throw fire and stuff. Uh, honestly, the ones in the original Demon Souls still freak me out. They're so scary. And in the remake, they kind of lose a sense of dignity almost. Now their their clothes are torn up. They have this big exposed like belly with all these like warts and and growths on it. They look a lot more like a boomer from Left 4 Dead, uh, from like mm -hmm. Left 4 Dead. Uh, they, have, they don't smile as often. They do still smile and they do still laugh, but they almost sound like like they're like about to cough out a lung when they do it. It's not quite as intimidating. And again, like that kind of atmosphere from the original is kind of lost, especially with stuff like the fat officials. I, I saw uh, some of the images that you're putting out there, and it's uh, yeah, it's definitely a bit of a change. Yeah. Big and I'm sorry, I, I can't I can't hear the word like a comparison in a boomer without thinking of my uh, Krillin mod, where yeah, he just blows mod. up. Yeah, <laughs> I think I I think oh. I get what um what Nexus is is talking about in the sense that it's the PS3 version. It it, yeah. it created more of this haunting environment that you got this feeling very that gothic, de yeah, very gothic, and that demons were really just like scavenging this land. Yeah. Whereas uh the new remake feels more along the lines of like um. I don't know, like just medieval fantasy. Yeah, like desolate, just just yeah. sad and desolate. Like it's yeah. not. What I was gonna yeah. say before was, um, mm -hmm. like you know, these com these complaints come up and they're legitimate. But I saw someone make a really good point that you know, just because I mean, gr granted, whoever said that comment about the um, oh, do, being faithful, that's why the difficulty is not there. Yada yada. Like that was stupid bullshit. But that person's an idiot. But uh, I'm actually when, gonna get back to that later. Yeah, you know, I I I know you are. That's why I brought yeah. it up. But um, like. But something I thought someone pointed out that was really interesting, I'm sorry I keep coming around this, is that um, when you're an artist on this game mm -hmm. and you want to do right by it, if some executive from whatever fucking company is is putting the money behind it goes, you got to make that a fat character with warts and take yeah. away the mask because that's what's going to sell. You yeah. can't go, no, 
because that yeah. person's going to tell you, get the fuck out, you, you do it, until yeah. they get to the person who does it. Right. Mm-hmm. Sadly, that's kind of what happens yeah. in, in higher-up game development. And the, the other complaint that I've seen in in um, in reference to people's criticisms is like, um, people are saying like, oh, well, you know, the PS3 was limited. And that's true. It was. It, there's a lot of limitations with the PS3. I'm going to talk about the music later, and that's another issue, but one of the things that I think make Demon's Soul so special is that the developers of the game with a limited budget and with limited hardware, so it's early PS3 game, they've made something that works within the restrictions that they had that was still really special. And they created a unique atmosphere with that. That is kind of lost in the remake. And I I want to say, you know, the enemy design, enemy redesigns and boss redesigns. So there's also some armor redesigns too. I don't think they're really that big a deal. They don't really impact the aesthetic that much and the atmosphere that much. But the big one that I think is an actual problem with the game is the soundtrack. The new soundtrack is not very good. Uh, A lot of the original soundtrack is very subdued, very quiet, kind of gives you this feeling of helplessness in a lot of of situations. In other situations, it almost feels like the music is making fun of you and laughing at you. Uh, It gives you this feeling of like, there's a dying animal in front of you and you're putting it out of its misery or maybe you know uh the flame lurker theme so it sounds like something you'd hear in a funeral right because it's going to kill you a lot here it's your funeral you know uh and the the remake lacks a lot of the like loud trumpets and loud percussions instead has a lot of like loud violin and choir which makes it sound a bit more generic a lot more like dark souls 3 and bloodborne it kind of lacks the uniqueness of the original soundtrack and said just kind of blends together i did an experiment where i listened to the original soundtrack and obviously i'm a lot more familiar with it so i picked out you know different boss themes that uh that uh you know the songs are associated to and then i listened to the remake soundtrack i played it on shuffle to make sure that uh you know i wasn't cheating by having it lined up correctly but I could barely identify some of the soundtracks to the bosses anymore because they sound so different. They're almost completely different sound- songs. It's like if you were playing a Halo remake, right? And you're you're getting into the Warthog, you're about to do the Warthog run. It's so exciting, right? Music starts playing, and then you hear like Ed Sheeran. And he's like, <laughs> We're gonna run like the Warthogs. Oh my and god. And you're like, Well, what the what the fuck? Why is Ed Sheeran here? It's this just such a Warthog run. And it's listed as the Warthog run. And the developers are like, oh, yeah, you know, this is the Warthog run song now. We reimagined it. But it doesn't, it doesn't, it, it just doesn't, doesn't convey, it, it doesn't convey yeah. the same uh, emotion or feeling. It's just like, exactly. Um, and I think I, I actually would answer that. I, and this is, this is not an excuse or anything. It's just more of an agreement, uh, agreement, um, yeah. uh, just explanation of it. But rather, I think when, they ultimately when they remade demon souls they are essentially trying to appeal Mm -hmm. to a more broader audience um with with making it feel and look more generic yeah um and unfortunately on a fiscal scale i guess that might work i mean i don't know because i i feel like there were a lot of people that really did like the original demon souls the way it was um, and we're just hoping for the exact same yeah. experience, just with updated graphics. And, and I'm fine with changes. Ultimately, I think mm-hmm. a lot of the changes are really dope. But okay, the so, music stuff in particular, it makes me sad that people that are so, new to Demon Souls aren't going to be able to experience that same atmosphere. I mm-hmm. I actually went ahead and I went on IMDb to try to find mm-hmm. who did the OST for the new one. Uh, I'm not finding like an actual composer, but the score mixer behind this one. Did Ghost of Tsushima, Last of Us Part mm. Two, Death Death Stranding, the the Modern Warfare remake from last year, uh, stuff stuff like that? Does it sort of? I don't know if you played any. any uh, I, I played a fair few of those. I does wouldn't that, say it. I wouldn't like say it sounds like those. No, it, okay. it's, in the it case of Modern Warfare, like that, that's Dark a, Souls Three. If I had to yeah. compare it. In the, yeah. in the case of a Modern Warfare, that's basically just a full on reboot slash prequel. I'm looking a for requel. the closer right now. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, it's the original Water Souls game. game so uh, I will bring up. I think the biggest offender to the change in music is there's a song 
uh, that plays, and I'm not going to spoil it because I know people are going to experience Demon Souls for the first time, but if you're familiar with Demon Souls, the boss, the final boss of the fifth world, the one that's at the bottom of the swamp, you'll probably know what I'm talking about at this point. Uh, it's the theme Abandoned by God, and it's the original is this solo organ with like some light violin in the background. It's sad, gives you a sense of dread. You're, this is a fight where you're not the hero. You're doing something awful. And in the remake, it almost sounds like bombastic and like epic. It gives you this feeling of like, like you're like you're doing something. You're you're the you're the hero in this situation. But like think- when you compare it to what you're doing in the fight, like you're doing something horrible in the fight. It, and it it just gives you this totally different feeling from the music. Um, I, I want to have a question just because I want to see if this is the same thing I had seen. Uh, does the does the does the phrase "birds for scale" have a relevance to this boss? Uh, no, no. Okay. I'm talking well, about uh, there's two people in a swamp that just want to be left alone, and you have to go kill them. So okay. in the so uh, right, the yes, battle. yes, I remember them. Yeah. I'm so in relation to the uh, with a similar issue from what I've heard. Yeah. That they in relation to. Music. Sorry, go on. Th- in relation to the uh, bird issue, is there no uh, cause for concern? Oh, no. uh, my God. I think I'm not sorry. <laughs> that one didn't sound <laughs> too concert, bad. But again, like, sorry, ultimately it's... kind of doesn't stand out as much. Mm. So I actually found the guy who composed mm. it. His name is Bill Hems- Hems- mm-hmm. Hemsipat. His uh, address is... <laughs> <laughs> His area code uh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, he, did, he did the Ghost of Tsushima DLC, mm. and he was the he was the music editor on a bunch of stuff: God of War, Death Stranding, Voltron, Legendary Defenders. So I think I could maybe <laughs> compare it to the God of War soundtrack to an extent. I think okay. God of War still um, because I forget the name of the composer, but he does an awesome job making fair, it very. Fair. Unique fair, themes fair. for the game that that go throughout the whole whole game. It, it is it's uh, bear 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 yeah. McCreary. Uh, yeah, yeah, bear something. Bear, well, bear bear McCreary also did yes, the bear McCreary. Bear McCreary uh, fun fact, uh, real quick, also did the music for um, Outlander, the show. I uh, think um, I think just to put a bow on it, just because we can. Before. Yeah, I think just to put a bow on it, just like because we can absolutely do a whole yeah. podcast specifically about Demon Souls. And just because I know a Blaine wants to talk about Yakuza Seven, uh, can I say also one n- final thing? Well, can yeah, I say just I have one one final thing as well? Yeah, yeah I, go ahead. I, so I was just going to say that um, in comparison with the two soundtracks, from what I'm understanding, is that um, it seems like when they made the soundtracks uh, for the for the original, it they obviously took the story and the characters into account. Yeah. Whereas when they made the remake they were just like, oh no, it's a remake of Demon yeah. Souls, our original title. We gotta make it epic and 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 yeah. powerful. And it, you know, they totally threw the whole semblance of the story out the window. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if you had that, a... Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. And again, like, to go back to Shadow of the Colossus, there's... It's a good remake, but there's a sense of nuance, contract, contrasting imagery that's lost, right? If there's an enemy, then that's an enemy. They can't be tragic. They can't be scary. Uh, they or say they can't be scary. They have to be gross, and they have to or they have to be like badass, right? They can't be. They can't be as interesting as they were in the original. And I think that one of the biggest issues that I have with some of the and I obviously you guys talked about this a lot a couple episodes ago, but they made this big deal about we don't want to change the original vision of demon souls so we're not going to be adding easy mode or accessibility options anything like that right which is close to the original Mm. and yet there's all of these changes to enemies armor design some of the armor is completely different uh some of the the music is completely different so that excuse of we don't want to change the original vision by adding easy mode. I'm sorry, but it's mm-hmm. bullshit. It's complete. It's absolute totally fucking bullshit. That makes sorry, sense. yes, it is completely bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> it's also it's why I doubt. I mean, the excuse I said before, where hey, if a higher up tells you do X, you have to do X. Yeah. If the director of this game is going like, uh, or whoever it was, I don't remember off the top of my head. Was it was it the director? Uh, I, yes, I believe it was. Yeah, it was one of the directors. Well, well sometimes even the director has to. 
Sometimes even the director has to capitulate to higher up producers. Yeah, that's and true. So no, that's 100% just got to listen to the IP holder to, uh, you know, whatever. No, absolutely. Well, so and it just the point... makes me less willing to believe that was the way it was across the board if they're making such a big deal out of, unless, again, it's literally just to appease to the lowest common denominator you know, of the Souls board if, community. If I had to throw mm -hmm. out a guess, I bet they had trouble making it and just wanted to throw out an excuse. Because one of the mm -hmm. things they did was oh, they probably. took the original AI from the original Demon Souls and just put it into the game again. So the AI for the enemies is the same AI as the original Demon Souls. Which means they do a lot of the same stupid shit. Which is really funny. So <laughs> uh, I imagine maybe they just had trouble with like 2010 AI code and couldn't figure it out or something like that. Can I... So made... quick uh, elevator pitch summary. What, what would you say your quick thoughts on it are? Uh, for Demon Souls, again, like ultimately, awesome game, awesome remake of a of a classic game. I didn't even talk about all the things that like I have a bunch of notes about stuff I like, but we're gonna have you know, to I'll have you on again. Go on we're we're going to have a specific yeah. podcast for this. I have so much stuff about stuff I like, but ultimately, there's some changes in the atmosphere that affect the game to an extent. But it's still a great remake. I still think people should really play it. It's it's awesome. It's really really dope. Awesome. Thank you, Nexus. Blaine, I have, the floor is yours. Well, see, so you're going to be mad at me because I actually was delaying my own talk a little bit to make to make a comment relevant to what Nexus was saying. Mm. Uh, with everything you've said about this, about this game tonight, has actually makes me think about how, like, every time people say, like, we want a real remake of Silent Hill 1, or we want <laughs> yeah. a, a better HD remake of, like, 2 or 3. And when you made the comment you did about how... Um, FromSoft was working within their limitations, and that's part of why you see you yeah. have this, like, striking product. It's kind of why, like, whenever I hear people say things like that, I'm just kind of like, maybe... I mean, if, if the hypothetical Schrodinger's Silent Hill soft reboot actually does happen, I'm not going to say no to it. I still don't believe it's going to happen, but I'm not going to say no to it. But I feel like when people say, I want, like, another remake that wasn't Shattered Memories and stuff like that, you're not going to be... You're still not going to get... Yeah. You're not going to get that the one... Uh, the one visual director who yeah. literally had to lock higher ups out of his office and, and hold the CG cutscenes oh, yeah. hostage in order to get the game the way they wanted it to be. Like and, you're not going to get that in a remake of Silent Hill one. And you don't get that from blue point having whatever options they did to do what they were going to do. And do also with remake. the whole Silent Hill one thing and the whole based on limit limitations, that's where the fog comes from. Yeah. yeah, I feel like if they're, if they're so iconic, that, and it's because yeah, of the I feel like if I feel mm -hmm. like they if they same try to redo Souls, that, actually. like if they try to redo that, it's just not gonna hit the same. Yeah. So it's like I'm 100 percent behind you, Blaine. Like 100 percent behind yeah. you. Like from don't um, say we need remakes of stuff. We don't need remakes the, of everything. The argument for remakes versus ports. I'm always always on the side of ports, just from the preservation standpoint. Oh like, yeah, 100 percent. You know, I think people should be able to experience the original Demon Souls and the original atmosphere. I'd love if they just poured it on the PS5. I think it'd be dope. For they what had, it's I, worth, it's I believe digital it, on PS3. I'm sure it wouldn't be that I, hard. I believe um, in that Blue Point interview that uh, Digital Foundry did. They said that the, these two mm -hmm. engines are running concurrently, so oh, yeah, they technically absolutely. have Demon Souls running uh, on the can, PS5. There's a new camera. You can actually switch it to the old shitty janky camera if you want. I mean, I've Hey, I've played a lot of Demon Souls. I don't want to fucking play with that camera ever again. <laughs> Fuck that. Until you load up the game, the original game, in like a year after you played the shit out of the remake. 